you can tell what an American chestnut tree looks like because these little uh, grooves in the leaf, nice little teeth marks. And that's why we call it castania dentata. It literally means toothed chestnut. They're really beautiful leaves. I'm your host, Nico Nansis, co-director of the American Chestnut Foundation here on Long Island, and I hope you enjoy. These trees are tenacious. Even if you put something on top of them, they will regrow. As you can see, there are a number of chestnut trees here. I think as of right now, we have a total of 10 to like 11, and there's even more up in the hill that way. Here's an example of chestnut blight. You see that little orange patch? That is the chestnut tree being eaten alive by an airborne fungus that goes into little cuts in the tree. What will happen is this part of the tree will die and everything below it will stay alive. See, all these trees are actually the remnants of older ancient chestnut trees that were here originally. And unfortunately, when the chestnut blight occurred, this entire species was nearly wiped out. So chestnut regrowth sprouts are a term that we use for a lot of American chestnut trees these days. This is actually a really good example of an entire tree that died from chestnut blight. The remains of a former chestnut stump and you can see all these little orange spores, just a blight. We're trying to revive such an important foundational species. American chestnut trees fill in the niches that we have more or less left vacant. I'm around at least 60 feet up in the air on Long Island's tallest American chestnut tree. This is the last main branch in the canopy that's still growing strong. The other ones have died due to blight. This tree has a glorious amount of credit bark, which is beautiful, which is amazing. And we believe that's a form of hypovirulence. I hope you are enjoying the view from up here. So right now, what we are looking for are female and male flowers. These are male flowers, we call them catkins and they are just covering the trees in this beautiful white pollen. You usually find a lot more male flowers because those are the ones that, you know, send out the most pollen. We're going to pluck one off the branch. Where are all these female flowers? Ah, ow, ow, thorns. Actually, no, that's just pine needles, whatever. Uh, Oh, female flowers, where are you? American chestnut trees cannot self-pollinate. So when you have multiple chestnut trees, they can definitely pollinate one another. Oh, I found one. I found it. This is a female flower. And once she's been pollinated, she will produce a nice and healthy chestnut burr. Now I'm gonna show you how to pollinate a chestnut flower. See a little white top here, the little white crown? You just brush. Scrub-a-dub-dub -dub in the tub. And voila! This is what a chestnut bird looks like in the fall. And you can see those little brown marks inside there, with all that velvet. That's where the chestnuts are housed. This is not squishy at all. This is quite prickly. Some of them can be the size of a tennis ball, but usually this is the regular size. The needles on American chestnuts are actually very unique in that they're not big. They're microscopically small. Dangerously prickly. 